Hello, and this time we're looking at the nth term rule, which is another way of saying the position to term rule. So if you have a sequence, a uh, simple sequence to uh, 5, 8, 11, something like this, this is the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. And what the nth term rule is doing is saying, can we work out the number, the number in the sequence, not from a previous number in the sequence, but from where it is. So if I want the 57th term, can I work out what that number is? Not by working out 5th and the 6th and the 7th, all the way up and the 55th and the 56th and the 57th, but use this number to turn it into the value. And yes, we can in many situations, and the ones that you uh, need to do this for uh, up to GCSE are generally um, linear sequences and that's where you just add the same amount from one term to the next to the next. You might have to use a quadratic or a different kind of nth term rule but you don't generally have to discover what the term nth term rule is from the sequence unless it's linear. So let's have a look at how you do it. It's quite straightforward but you have to learn the knack. So the first thing is you have to realize that they're very similar to times tables. So if you look at this, 4 to 12 goes up by 8, and then by 8 again, and by 8 again. So it's a bit like the 8 times table, which goes up by 8 each time. And the 8 times table would be written out as 8n. So wherever you are in the times table, 1 times 8, 2 times 8, 3 times 8, yes. However far you are, the 57th term would be 57 times 8. The problem is it doesn't start in the right place. The 8th time, 8 times table starts at 8, and ours starts at 4. So in order to sort of get the right sequence and not the 8 times table, we need to adjust it down. We don't want 8, we want 4, so we take away 4. Now, we're not taking away 4 because it's that number. We don't take away that number. It's what do you have to take away to turn uh, the times table number 8 into the first term and it just so happens that it's 4 and that's a 4 okay that's a coincidence if that sequence was the same but all taken one off so if it was 3 11 19 etc then it would be 8n take away well to get from 8 down to 3 you take away 5 so it would be 8n minus 5 in this next example, it's exactly the same. It's just the times table is going down. It's going from 6 to 1, that's minus 5, then minus 5, minus 5. So it's taking away 5 each time. So if you can think about it like times table, it's like the minus 5 times table. Except I'm not sure I like that because the minus 5 times table, well... I was going to say, because wouldn't that keep changing its sign, but we're not timesing by minus 5 each time, are we? We're adding another minus 5. So yeah, you can think about it as the minus 5 times table. I'm happy with that. Minus 5 times n still works. Minus 5 times n is your sequence, which would go down by 5 each time. But if that's true, it would start at minus 5. Minus 5 times 1 would be minus 5. And we've got 6. So how can we turn minus 5 all the way up into 6? Well, that's 11 higher than where we're suggesting. We're saying minus 5, but we want 6, so we need to add 11 to go all the way up to the correct starting position. So in each of these cases, you just need to look at what is the common difference, what is the amount that it's changing by each time, and then have that times n. That's your times table. And if you put 1 in, you're just going to get this number out. And if you don't want to start at that number, if you don't want to start at minus 5, then you have to ask yourself what you add on or take away to adjust this number into this number. Now, sometimes you can get a sequence, but in a picture. And the sequence might ask for the number of white tiles, uh, you know, in this patio style. And if you are given something with pictures like this, the best thing to do is just count them and to turn it into a number sequence. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for that one. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 there, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And now we have this, it might ask you for the next picture, well I'll leave you to sort of, you know, think about how you'd copy that, but in terms of getting the nth term rule, do it in numbers, much easier, and then again we can look at the common difference, 8 to 13 is plus 5, plus 5, so it's going to be 5n, 
but we're not starting with 5, we're starting with 8. So how do we turn that into an 8? We add 3. Now some places you'll see will give the nth term rule like this. They'll say tn equals. Well, that's fine. That's saying that the value of the term at position number n, or whatever you put in, so position 7, so the seventh term value is 8 times 7, take 4. That's absolutely fine. You can do that. But in GCSEs and exams going up to there, uh, certainly for the Ed Excel exam board, if it asks for the nth term rule, you can just write it down like that as an expression. You don't need to write it as a formula with TN, unless they contextualize it in some way and, and you know, it's the number of tables or something, in which case it might be, uh, you know, T equals for the number of tables, or here, the no number of slabs, so maybe it's S equals for the, the number of slabs is, and then however many red ones there are determines how many white ones there are. But unless it is contextualized like that, if it just says what's the nth term rule, you can write down that expression. If you have any questions, you know where to put them down in the comments. But for now, cheerio.